This is The Economist magazine, owned by the Rothschild and Agnelli banking family. The cover is from 2019. In it, tattoos with a DNA symbol can be seen, a mobile phone with a QR code, facial recognition symbols, stalks with children marked with a barcode. One of the four horsemen of the apocalypse is masked. And finally, the image of a pangolin. Je ne savais pas ce que c'était qu'un pangolin en janvier 2019. Dans un journal de banquier en janvier 2019. I want to start by asking you about what Putin said. Uh, I'm going to quote him. Everyone at Kazan shares similar aspirations and values and a vision of a new democratic world order. Now that, if I read between the lines, would suggest a new world order. The commonality here is that they would like to see a global governance system that is more equitable, in which the global South has more say and receives a greater share of the benefits. And Russia and China are attempting to say that they are leading the charge that for that more just international order. What we're witnessing here is the beginning of a different kind of international order. President Harris said today in her post, in her speech, he said that President Trump was going to turn the U.S. military against the American public and use the public to promote his agenda. How many of you think that is true? Well, what's interesting to me is that the Biden-Harris administration has done something two weeks ago that has never been done in American history, which is to send exactly lethal force to send a directive to the Pentagon changing the law to make it legal for the U.S. military to be used to use lethal force against American citizens on American soil. And technically now it's legal for the U.S. military under this directive it will become legal for the U.S. military to shoot and kill Americans who engage in political protests because they disagree with policies in the White House. I'm not making this up. Any of you can look it up. This is a democratic initiative. This did not come during the Trump administration. This did not come from Donald Trump. It came from the Democratic Party. And that's why I left the Democratic Party. Are you concerned that Trump might be elected again? I, I think it's very likely. Mm. And if it happens, it is likely to be the kind of like the, the death blow to what remains of the global order. And he says it, and he says it openly. Now, again, it should be clear that <clears throat> many of these politicians, they present a false dichotomy, a false binary vision of the world, as if you have to choose between patriotism and globalism, between being loyal to your nation and being loyal to some kind of, I don't know, global government or whatever. And this is completely false. There is no contradiction between patriotism and global cooperation. When we talk about global cooperation, we definitely don't have in mind, at least not anybody that I know, a global government. This is an impossible and very dangerous idea. It simply means that um, you have certain rules and norms for how different nation states treat each other and, 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 and behave towards each other. If you don't have a system of, of global norms and values, then very quickly what you have is just global conflict, is just wars. A global economic reset and a global digitation project that aims to merge the physical and the biological. It is the step to the fourth industrial revolution. But come on, I'm not the one telling you. The one who came up with this whole story is telling you. What, what the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital, and our biological identities. 
And how is it possible to merge the physical and the biological? I think you're getting an idea in your head. You see, the global order cannot be changed in one day, but it can certainly be challenged one initiative at a time. Among the most important topics on the agenda at the 2024 BRICS summit in the Russian city of Kazan are the further expansion of the group and the creation of a new payment system within its framework. Prime Minister Modi was referring to the UAE, the newly minted member of BRICS. This year, UPI was introduced in Dubai. UPI stands for Unified Payment System. It is the backbone of digital payments in India. So far, the UPI has been rolled out in seven countries and this list is expected to grow in the coming months. Over 30 countries have shown interest in adopting this Indian system. So should the BRICS consider using it too? Well, the idea is appealing, but not without its own set of challenges. BRICS nations represent 45% of the world's population. Mr Putin says talks have been constructive. The discussions once again demonstrated that the states of the association share the universal values of peace, justice and equality and work together for the prosperity and well-being of our countries and peoples. The BRIC states stand in solidarity for the intensification of cooperation on the world stage based on the key principles of the Charter of the United Nations. Together, they strive to contribute in every possible way to the formation of just a multipolar world order. And look at things like artificial intelligence. Exactly. And robots, look yep. at things like um, gene editing. Exactly. You know, opening a whole new horizon for medical science. And you see, the difference of this fourth uh, industrial revolution is it doesn't change what you are doing. It changes you. If you take a genetic editing, right. uh, just as an example, it's you who exactly. are changed. Yeah. And of yeah. course, this has a big impact on yeah. your identity. Yeah. And offers certain kinds of possibilities that have to be careful about. You know, yeah. when you began to... When you began to do that kind of gene editing, some people worry that you are changing what it means to be human. That's the problem. And, yeah. uh, I, it, uh, of course, the new uh, industrial revolution offers us many opportunities, but it raises many fold questions on the ethical, but even legal uh, implications. And we have to be prepared for it. So I want to talk to you today about the future of our species and really the future of life. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens. Within a century or two, Earth will be dominated by entities that are more different from us than we are different from Neanderthals or from chimpanzees. Because in the coming generations, we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. These will be the main products of the economy, of the 21st century economy. Not textiles and vehicles and weapons, but bodies and brains and minds. Now, how exactly will the future masters of the planet look like? This will be decided by the people who own the data. Those who control the data control the future, not just of humanity, but the future of life itself. Because today, data is the most important asset in the world. Now, why is data so important? It's important because we've reached the point when we can hack not just computers, we can hack human beings and other organisms. There is a lot of talk these days about hacking computers and email accounts and bank accounts and mobile phones, but actually we are gaining the ability to hack human beings. Biological knowledge multiplied by computing power multiplied by data equals the ability to hack humans. The human race is at a critical point. Al final, de lo que se trata es de organizar una gran entidad o varias entidades supranacionales que sean las que dicten el nuevo orden de cosas, el nuevo orden mundial. Have no doubt. 
you are living the most important moments of your life. Because you're going to be the protagonists of the most important moments in the history of humanity.